Hey guys, guys, today I'm going to teach you about Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, the signs and symbols explicated. This is part number four in the series for December of 2020. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Straight Satan Strategic Command, dedicated the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit and the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornications, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, Mother of Harlots, and Abominations of the Earth, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Okay guys, this is, we've, I've written actually 17 different points on uh, explaining the signs and symbols of Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. The first two verses I haven't even touched on. And there's more. <laughs> there's more that's contained herein. So, But this is actually part four of the series. So I'm going to continue. I'm on point number 12. And so we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. And so we're going to start right there. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, depicts the kingdom of Babylon, or Antichrist, as, the, as a golden cup. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 7, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken over wine, therefore the nations are mad. Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 15 through 17, as the spirit of Antichrist labors to conceal itself in the temple of man. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 through 7, where the word of God tells us that God is light and in him, in him is no darkness at all. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20 through 22, where the word of God tells us to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And explains that those that receive the mark of the beast shall be driven into darkness. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10, we have the those that receive the mark of the beast no longer cognizant vertically of the glory of God within their souls. They're not even receiving a passive manifestation of the fruits of life. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And they are um, groping. They're, the Bible makes it clear here and explicates the fact that spiritually they're looking for judgment, justice, and a presence of God, and they're in they're they're in pain psychologically and spiritually because they can't find righteousness within their hearts. And the Bible depicts this as being in darkness, and its darkness is ultimately the lack of the presence of God, and so. We know that 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 the 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 kingdom of Antichrist is depicted as the golden cup that the woman is is holding within her hand and upholding, and she's actually drinking out of. And so, one of the purposes of Babylonian captivity is we know that 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 um, um, the kingdom of Babylon was as they rebelled against God in the book of Genesis and and the, the 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 first kingdom of Babylon appeared God came down and confounded their languages so they could not uh, they could not uh, what I don't want to put this they could not organize against him and and um, begin to labor to escape his presence and judgment. So God confounded their languages, um, and so the word Babel means confusion. He, God confounded the, the Babylonians' languages, and then they, they actually went throughout the entire earth and populated the entire earth, which actually was, was, that, was not a bad thing because they, they might have just created one kingdom, <laughs> one kingdom that was laboring for nothing but to escape the presence and judgment of Almighty God. And so... 
Babylonian captivity is depicted as spiritual darkness and confusion as to what is true. John 17, 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So we have the woman appear here holding the, the golden cup in her hand, which is symbolic of the kingdom of Babylon. We know that that Antichrist cannot crown himself in the kingdoms kingdoms of man until he has first seated himself as king in the hearts of all flesh and all and all that love his appearing are manifest as his children and their blood is infected with the spirit of antichrist and the demons of hell are arrayed in their presence and they are 1 Corinthians 14 33 says that God is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of the saints so these people are they're confused they're the Babylonian kingdom this kingdom and this golden cup it looks golden but they're confused to what is true and they're not cognizant of their until it's too late we know and this is the purpose this is God declaring in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 through 22 that he's going to drive them into darkness so they're not cognizant of the condemnation and the mark of the beast as it comes and it falls upon them and that way they don't become mass hysterical and begin just a a, a terrible you know a manifestation of uh, I mean uh, just uh, going crazy and just everybody just satanically and the fullness of satanic criminal psychopathology. So this is one person, one purpose. I, kind of like a horse that you put a blinders on a horse to keep it going in a straight path and to, so it doesn't focus its attention on anything else. And so this is the reason, this is like this, this is the reason when prisoners are executed in the electric chair, they put they put blinders over their eyes. I don't think I don't think they necessarily do that when they put them on the uh, they put masks over their heads and uh, but not necessarily when they when they uh, are are put on the the they receive lethal inject, injection. I think they continue to allow them to, to to witness their surroundings until they pass away. But God puts blinders spiritually on people so they don't understand and they're not cognizant of the fact that death's permanent resonance has taken taken their souls captive and they're about to be cast into the lake of fire. If 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 God didn't do this and blind blinding blinding them to the the manifestation of their spiritual captivity it would create mass hysteria and it would create a it would totally um it would totally uh, uh, uh just totally break down every facet of functioning society in democratic union because people would know that they are they're about to be judged by god and they're not going to know this people that receive the mark of the beast that are in babylon are not going to know until uh, uh, that they have the mark of the beast until just the final few days before the, I personally believe and uh, before Jesus Christ they'll begin to suspect we know they suspect when the seven last plagues fall upon them they'll begin to suspect that that they're being judged by God and they're being set apart and for in exclusion for punishment and eternal separation which is the blackness of darkness forever Obadiah 15 and 16 from the presence of God it'll be just like they were never born and they chose that they chose that they chose to serve evil they chose to seat willfully in the kingdom of babylon and solicit hatred for their brother and and for the people of god and 1 john 2 10 11 and uh in this uh, no it's uh he that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him but he that hateth his brother walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes and here's the purpose for God blinding them and spiritually to their their soon departure into oblivion and it'll be just like they were never born for most people that that didn't perform the 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 heavyweight works of satanic captivity and 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 promoting um, the seal of Satan, like in the United States Constitution, people that knew that they were actually reverse engineering democracy, democratic process, and constitutional protections. These people are, are, are heavy laborers. These people that are laboring actually to, to, to incorporate the seal of Satan in the United States Constitution, these are pretty heavy duty laborers for the spirit of Antichrist and the kingdom of hell and the king, that's the kingdom of Babylon. And they'll receive 
further judgment in the presence of God. Revelation 20, 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose the face, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. So we know that people are, are egressing um, the presence of God because only in the presence of God can men choose not to serve him without penalty. And Romans 13, 10 says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. So as the, the we know that as the image of the beast is set apart in exclusion by the seal of God being made manifest on the saints of righteousness, granting them eternal life, he goes satanically insane. He goes satanically, criminally insane and uh, reveals this psychopathology as the seal of Satan is operational within his heart and he labors to capture people as he's captured by Satan, tempting them with monetary and sexual advancement. And he actually labors to conceal, which is a manifestation of his Babylonian captivity. You know, to block free speech on a certain group of individuals that 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 work for in the civil authorities in the United States would be disastrous because we know what they'll do. We know that 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 as they're doing now, they'll commit murders and they'll extort, they'll oppress people and they'll they'll extort people. But this is the manifestation of their captivity in Babylon. It's the manifestation of the fact that they're no longer cognizant vertically of the fruits of life. They're no longer capable of cultivating the fruits of life. They don't receive any wisdom from God. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 through 11. The only reason they labor to, to, to know the judgments of God is to captivate other people as they've been set apart in exclusion for judgment as they are residing in darkness. We know anybody that would solicit the uh, uh, to harm the children of God and the children of man by pouring out the spirit of Antichrist as it captures people in the worship of death is 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 people that are at that will that have no reservation about serving Satan in whatever capacity. John chapter eight verse forty four. You have your father the devil unless your father you will do. You are murdered to fulfill all your lusts. And so this is the manifestation of Babylonian captivity as it comes upon the image to the beast as it is it is the, it has the seal of Satan, the spirit of Antichrist, within its soul, and it labors to reverse engineer democracy, democratic process, and constitutional pr protections, and it solicits the egress of souls from constitutionality as it resides today, and so it can fulfill its satanic desires. And so what it's doing, it's actually, it's, it's building the kingdom of Babylon before our very eyes. It's, 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 it's promising sexual and monetary reward to every single person that it talks to either or, and it is promising a better deal. It's promising people protection from itself as it is laboring to kill the children of God and the children of man. And nothing can be further from the truth because we know as by the seal of Satan that, and by the manifestation of its presence within the body of Christ as God has revealed to us today that it will actually it will kill God's children to satiate its illicit desires and it will steal from everybody because once the harvest stopped once Satan's seal if it's manifest in the United States Constitution I guarantee the first thing God's gonna do is stop the harvest in every form or fashion the harvest will no longer be manifest like it is today and people, because we know, absolutely, even a natural man knows that democracy and democratic process and constitutional protections for the entire group is the riches of the world. It's the land flowing with milk and honey. Because all we have to do is look at, look at countries that are built upon theocracies and that are without democracy and democratic process and we can see all you have even natural man can see the destitution and the poverty that resides within these countries and God's judgments once the image of the beast once he thinks that he can he can he can satanically subjugate God's children and abuse them in any form or fashion and kill people to keep it to, to manifest his power horizontally I guarantee the first thing God's gonna do he's gonna stop the harvest in every form or fashion that he possibly can. The United States, without the Constitution that it stands today, with Jesus, Holy Father God, on the throne, making manifest his, his, his power 
and giving men the ability to choose to serve him or no without penalty, that's how the Constitution stands today. It stands as the fullness of God resides within it in the dissemination of judgment, justice, and righteousness. And as Holy Father God allows men to choose to serve him or not without penalty. But Satan has the seal of Satan residing within the image of the beast as it solicits the worship of death and it tortures the children of God and the children of man. I guarantee you, it has no such idea for fairness, judgment, and righteousness. Okay, the, by the, the, everything I've been preaching on for the past year makes this absolutely crystal clear. And so we know that as the image of the beast labors to kill the children of God and the children of man, it's it, this will accelerate. 2 Timothy 3.13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse and deceiving and be, being deceived. So let's keep going. The, uh, number 12, this is point number 12. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6 depicts the kingdom of Babylon or Antichrist as a golden cup. Jeremiah 51, 7, Jeremiah 25, 15 through 17. As the spirit of Antichrist labors to conceal itself in the temple of man. And this is congruent. This is absolutely parallel to the pogrom that the image of the beast is, is performing and operating within the United States today. It's attempting to hide its illicit works from, pu from the public consciousness. And this is the manifestation of its desire to hide in darkness from the presence of God. Because men, as it judges people unworthy of the glory of God, it still knows that people are capable of disseminating righteous judgment by the presence of God, and they'll condemn it for its illicit works if, if, it, if its illicit works come to light in this union, in this democratic union. So, so the spirit of Antichrist is the golden, is, excuse me, the kingdom of Babylon is depicted as the golden cup as the spirit of Antichrist labors to conceal itself in the temple of man. First sealing and first seeding and sealing itself in the hearts of all flesh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, where we have the seal of Satan that resides within the image of the beast today as it labors to make it full, fully operational in its capacity. And the only way the, the seal of Satan can come to full operational capacity is for, in, for this to be, Revelation 13, 15 through 17, to be incorporated into the United States Constitution. Because it can't go, it can't come out here and shoot people in the back and steal people's money and sexually abuse God's children without it being able to, to prevent people from finding out within its immediate environment and local city state for that it's, it's doing what it's doing. And thus it, it, it's laboring today to indiscriminately kill the children of God and the children of man by pouring out the worship of death upon the population, both physically and spiritually. It's laboring for a spiritual harvest of death that's manifest in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. So, the spirit of anti, the, the kingdom of Babylon or Antichrist is the golden cup that labors to, to conceal the spirit of Antichrist in the temple of man to seat and seal itself in the hearts of all flesh, Revelation 13, 15, and 2, 17, to appear and crown itself as king in the kingdoms of man, Revelation 13, 18. And once we have the seal of Satan in whatever measure that God allows it to appear within this democracy and democratic process and constitution in the United States of America, once we have the seal, once it comes to its full operational capacity, whether it's, it, it manages to, to federally corrupt the United States Constitution or it manages to co just corrupt the state constitutions, we have the manifest presence of Antichrist in our world. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. So the image of the beast is actually laboring. It's laboring. We know it's laboring for a civil and ecclesiastical union, and it's laboring to conceal its illicit works from the public consciousness. And while it's doing this, this the Bible's depicting this as it's laboring to hide itself in darkness. It's, it's, it's infected with the spirit of Antichrist. It's performing those works by the manifest seal of Satan in Revelation 13, 15 through 17, and it's laboring 
to to hide itself in darkness so people aren't cognizant of its true nature. And this is the very manifestation of the golden cup that appears within the, the, the woman, the woman that's 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 the harlot, that it, that's, it looks golden to her, but it's actually the spirit of Antichrist in fullness, and it's full appearing within false apostate Christianity. So that, at, at the, we know the image of the beast is laboring to egress people from democracy, democratic process, and constitutional protections, and thus from the presence of God. It's laboring to, 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 to magnify the spirit of Antichrist within the soul of man from McDonald's all the way up to the, to the, to the federal legislative and executive positions within our country. It's laboring to lure people out of the light that God has placed within the United States Constitution and, and seat them in darkness so they will labor whether they're being promised protection or they're being promised sexual and monetary advancement, I believe that's the only three things that that the image of the beast has to offer. I believe that that sexual and monetary control is why it sold its soul to Satan, as manifested by Revelation chapter 17, verse three and four, and that it's promoting this to every single person that is pouring it. That it's that it's promoting and promulgating organized crime. And it's, it's thereby promoting this to everybody it's trying to take captive. And it's all a lie. The seal of Satan makes it clear it's all a lie. Because it, once it manages to incorporate at, and naturally into any constitution, Revelation 13, 15 through 17, the Bible makes it absolutely crystal clear, it's going to, to abuse and kill the people in false apostate, the, the righteous people and the false apostate Christianity. God judgment's going to fall on everybody by the image of the beast. It's going to exterminate everybody it can to be the king of the world. It's decided it's the number one most powerful, beautiful thing in the world as manifested by Satan's presence in its heart and its mind. It's the, it is the golden cup that, that resides within satanic captivity, and it's laboring to lift up its king. Nobody is going to be a friend of this power, and that's the mistake that people are making. It's going and it's soliciting organized crime, and it's manifesting the spirit of Antichrist, the kingdom of Babylon, in the hearts of people, and it's trying to captivate people and lure people to work and labor to manifest its power and fullness through the seal of Satan. And it's all a lie. Everything it tells you is a lie. It's the spirit of Antichrist. It's all it's it, as manifest in the golden cup. It looks like it's truth and it looks beautiful, but inside it's spiritually dead and it's lifting up the king of lies to appear for the mark of the beast to be made manifest upon all flesh. And God will not, God is not going to allow anybody to be cognizant that they're captive to this with the mark of the beast until it's time. They're, nobody's going to know that they have the mark of the beast until God allows them to know it. So, uh, let's keep going. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, reveals judgment of hypocrisy upon all flesh unto condemnation within and without the body of Christ via the image of the beast as all flesh... Uh, as all flesh is judged unworthy of magnifying the glory of God. Romans chapter 7, verse 12 through 14, wherefore the law is holy to command my holy, just, and good, was then that which is good made death unto me. God forbid sin that it might appear sin, working death in me. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as, a, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. James chapter 2, verse 10, whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. And Isaiah chapter 24, verse 21 and 22, where all those that receive the mark of the beast are depicted as prisoners of the Lord. So we know the image of the beast is as it labors for the civil and ecclesiastical union that's manifest by the beast and the harlot, and it it this is it it labors to conceal its solicit works by the manifest presence of spirit of Antichrist within its own heart as it labors to kill people to obtain satanic administrative control and, and constitutionalism over the entire population of the United States. 
we know that it labors for, for a civil and ecclesiastical union, and it is residing in judgment. It is residing in judgment to, in in a way, I believe it's, it's this is a, a facet, uh, this is a way that the image of the beast is justifying its satanic captivity on pain of death over everybody, over over civil authorities that it perceive that it, it it claims are not cultivating the fruits of righteousness and magnifying the glory of God, and over ecclesiastical powers that it became cognizant of that are magnifying the lives of Satan within their their congregations by 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 promoting false doctrines when it became cognizant of the multiplicity of false doctrines that reside within the majority of the body of Christ. It's, it immediately sat in judgment upon the body of Christ, and it became cognizant that it could, 1 Timothy 6.10, it could, it could incorporate its presence, the worship of death, within the congregations of righteousness. And, that's, and thus, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they had erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So it's residing in, ju uh, in judgment of hypocrisy on everybody. It's doing it at McDonald's. It's doing it at Burger King. It's doing it within civil powers, and it's doing it within ecclesiastical powers. And it's doing so to justify, I believe, within its own heart, its egress from judgment and righteousness and the presence of God within its own life. And so it's as it as it in hand, it, it abides in self-righteousness and it believes that it should be, it believes that it can govern better constitutionally than the manifestation of the United States Constitution today. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him, with he, with me. It believes that it it, it needs to control the population by, on pain of death, and that that it and I believe that it's promoting that it's offering a better deal constitutionally to democracy and democratic process by ruling over people and being allowed to incorporate the seal of Satan within constitutional constitutionality and force people into what it believes is well we know we know it's actually promoting and promulgating uh, false doctrines and it does so deliberately to to proclaim its own greatness as to the fact that it's it should it should have dominion over all and the right to punish and to force people to worship the way that it sees fit and so it's it's we know that the image of the beast is residing in judgment upon everybody and this is the manifestation of the mark of the beast the seal of satan that resides the spirit of antichrist that resides within its own soul because of the fact of the pre-advent judgment and, and that began at the end of the 2300 year prophecy we know that that when jesus christ leaves the the, the heavenly sanctuary the seal of God is made manifest upon all flesh. And this is the manifestation of God judging men in righteousness and sealing them with the seal of eternity. And this, the, the very fact of God judging people and granting the seal of eternal life upon them in our world today, because we know the pre-advent judgment began, it's, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's explicated in Revelation 14, 6 through 12, and it began at the end of the 2,300-year prophecy. And it was when Jesus Christ left the holy place and, and moved into the most holy place to perform the final work of judgment. And as men are sealed with eternity, this sets the wicked in and of itself apart for exclusion. And they do those things. They become operational with the spirit of Antichrist, the seal of Satan. The image of the beast is... The Church of Satan. It's the it's the cultivating, it's the the corporal body of death, the worship of death that cultivates the entire world to receive the mark of the beast as children of Satan. And the manifestation of the seal of God sets the wicked apart for exclusion, and that's the manifestation of the seal of Satan within the heart of the image of the beast. So uh, uh, we know the image of the beast is residing a judgment of, of not only hypocrisy, but hypocrisy unto death. It thinks it, it sees the hypocrisy. It sees people abiding in sin, and it, it's bringing judgment of death 
for every single person that it believes is unworthy of the glory of God. And those that it that that it does that it's cognizant that are worthy of the glory of God. That's just the manifestation of the darkness that resides within its own heart. And its desire, its desire, it believes that it it it, it deserves this dominion because it is a special creation and it can just as Satan rebelled in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. It can rule over everybody and democracy and democratic process. It can, it can, on pain of death, eliminate hypocrisy within the United States and force people to do what it, what it believes is right within its sight. And it, thus it's claiming dominion. It's claiming dominion over all flesh to be financially and sexually superior as it labors to fulfill its illicit desires and it is something better it's something better that the united states constitution does not provide for, pe for people today but the bible makes it absolutely crystal clear forced worship is 100 percent unacceptable to god you cannot force you can and i personally believe that 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 children doing bible studies that are under 18 years of age in school i believe that that should be mandatory because they are minors and they are that's your 100 percent the government's 100 percent within godly domain to force children before they graduate from high school to do to learn uh for the fundamentals of christianity Okay, I believe that that's absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. But once people become, once people translate fully out of God's presence, there's no forcing them back in. You know, there's no forcing people into the kingdom of God. Some people are going to choose to not be, to, to not be made manifest and to not receive life after this life. And that's, God respects that. And he's not going to torture anybody for it. I guarantee you, it'll be just like they were never born. That's how that's how the Bible explains how how their judgment will reside upon them. The fire is reserved only for the devil and his angels and those that serve and become operational. And Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. It's reserved for people that are laboring to to make manifest. Uh, uh, their their works and their proximity to antichrist, to antichrist to captivate people in their own ignorance and in their own desire to exchange their soul and life for death, light for darkness. So, point number 14, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, reveals the image to the beast as the closest spiritual captive to the beast or Antichrist. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 says, And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And we know the names of blasphemy that appear here are the image to the beast. And notice the names of blasphemy are within the interior. They make up the interior of this beast here that appears here in Revelation chapter 17. Verse 3. So I believe that this is what this is depicting. I personally believe this appears to me to be the spiritual proximity of the image to the beast to Antichrist. And we know the anti we know or the beast. And we know the beast is Antichrist, and we know the Antichrist is a man. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, and his number is six hundred and three scored six. And I reason the, the name the reason the names of blasphemy are within the interior of they make up the inside of the image of the beast is because spiritually the image of the beast is the closest proximity to the appearing of Antichrist in our world as manifest by its corporeal appearing in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, and it's causing the mark of the beast. It causing, not false apostate Christianity, the image of the beast causes the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17. So, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6 also reveals false apostate Christianity as the closest physical body in proximity 
to the appearing of Antichrist, Revelation 13, 18, where we have the appearing of Antichrist as man after the seal of Satan is made manifest by the image of the beast in whatever, whatever measure that God allows in his wisdom, God allows it to appear within our world. So we have, and thus we have, in Revelation chapter 17, 4, and I saw a woman, And no, no, Revelation 74, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Okay, so we know that the precious stones that appear here that the woman's arrayed with, the adornments of the woman are the souls of those that labored for the closest proximity in false, pro false apostate Christianity to be physically in close to the appearing of Antichrist. Okay, Titus 2.10. Not purloining. Purloining means, purloining means to commit theft. Not purloining, but showing all good fidelity that they might adorn the doctrine of our God, our Savior in all things. So we know that Christians adorn their doctrines on their spiritual robes. And it's the same thing. What is appearing here, it appears uh, in Revelation chapter 7, uh, verse 19, verse 7 and 8. And Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 makes it clear that the saints of God are adorned with, with robes of righteousness and they are decked, they are adorned with jewels that are their doctrines as they labor for, for proximity to God in eternity as they magnify, they cultivate the fruits of righteousness and they magnify the glory of God in the world. But this harlot here, she's arrayed with the souls of those that labored for the image to the beast, they labored in captivity to the image of the beast because the image of the beast is, is the, the physical corporeal body that, that executes everybody that will not receive the mark of the beast. It kills everybody that will not worship the image. It doesn't say it, it, it kills everybody that will not worship false apostate Christianity. It says it kills everybody that will not worship the image of the beast. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what the image of the beast thinks about itself as it appears in, Reve in corporeal form in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image to the beast should be killed. It doesn't say anybody that would not worship the appearing of Antichrist. It doesn't say anybody that will not worship false apostate Christianity. It says everybody, it has power to kill anybody that will not worship it. And we know that it exchanged its soul for sexual and monetary control of all flesh in its immediate environment. So the woman is ador or adorned with gold, precious stone, and pearls. These are the souls of those that reside in false apostate Christianity are they have, as they are captivated in satanic power by the image of the beast, and they labor to make manifest with the image of the beast the appearing of Antichrist into our world. Thus, and this is the kingdom. This is the kingdom. She's lifting up the kingdom of Antichrist as she labors to convince the populations of our world that the image to the beast is righteous while it's disseminating the spirit of Antichrist and operational with the seal of Satan and magnifying Satan's presence within its heart within democracy, democratic process, and constitutional protection. So she's she's guilty. She's guilty. And that reveals, this reveals, the fact that the woman has the golden cup in her hand reveals that she's laboring, she's laboring to blind people spiritually to the illicit works of the beast and its image. And that's the, that's the manifestation of cognizant that resides within the image of the beast as the image of the beast labors to create a civil ecclesiastical union so false apostate Christianity will get up on the world stage and tell the populations while the body count starts increasing that the image of the beast has their best interest in mind and it's not doing what it's doing to the population and the children of God and the children of man. That's the whole purpose. The image of the beast, once the, once the, the image of the beast found out about the multiplicity of false doctrines that abide in, 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 in the majority of, of the body of Christ, it immediately re start, uh, rendered judgment of hypocrisy unto death upon the body of Christ, even as Jesus Christ was in the heavenly sanctuary mediating 
mercy and grace upon them, trying to invalidate. This is the very another manifestation of its its proclaiming to be God. Okay? The judgment of hypocrisy on people that, that God is rendering mercy and grace on, Hebrews chapter four, verse fifteen and sixteen. So but let's keep going. The harlot the harlot is is promoting uh, uh, spiritual unity with the beast and his image as the kingdom of Babylon is being promoted as the kingdom of darkness is being promoted and it's being it's concealing the illicit works of the image to the beast as the image to the beast has now become operational in full with the seal of Satan in its heart. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. So false apostate Christianity is actually not the church of Satan. That's the image to the beast. But she is in subject unto the image of the beast. The image of the beast is resident in corporeal form within her congregations. She is transferring funds from civil power through her accounts into the, the accounts of the image of the beast. And she's proclaiming to the population that the kingdom of Babylon and the kingdom of darkness and that the image of the beast is not doing, that everything is okay, and that the image of the beast is not doing what it's doing. And she's using her false, her false manifestation of being the righteous body of Christ and to being God's manifestation upon earth, the manifestation of holiness upon earth to conceal the illicit works that are contained and operational by the image of the beast within Babylon and the kingdom of darkness. Thus, she is actually bodily, corpor in corporeal form, she's actually the physical bodies that are in closest proximity to the kingship and the crowning and the appearing of Antichrist into our world. Special note, the image of the beast appears within the interior of the beast as the names of blasphemy, denoting its spiritual captivity to the spirit of Antichrist. 1 John 2, 15 through 18, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. The golden cup is representing the kingdom of Babylon or Antichrist, Jeremiah chapter 51, 7, whose presence fulfills spiritual confusion as vertical detachment from the glory and house of God. 1 John 4, 16. Me, I should have put and the golden cup. They had the golden cup in false apostate Christianity representing the kingdom of Babylon or Antichrist, Jeremiah 51, 7, whose presence fulfills spiritual confusion as vertical detachment from the glory and house of God. 1 John 4, 16, for God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 and 12, and then shall many be offended, shall betray one another and hate one another because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I believe this verse 10 is the manifestation of the image of the beast pouring out the spirit of Antichrist and cultivating the harvest of death so people will worship death. They'll repeat words of death within their environment towards their fellow neighbor, rendering judgment upon people that have received no such judgment whatsoever, leaving their habitation of constitutionalism as it resides today in the United States, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and hate one another. These are people that are being cultivated satanically in a passive manifestation as their flesh is being tormented by the image of the beast, and they reside, on, reside in false judgment upon people that they believe are responsible for their torments and their pain. So this is another manifestation of the evacuation, vertical detachment from the glory of God, Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 and 12, and the operational works. This is, this is the fulfillment. This Matthew 24, 10 and 12 is the fulfillment of op the operational works of the image of the beast and the occupation of hell as it appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 through 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. And Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. And upon her forehead was her name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And as people choose to serve 
Romans 13, 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Okay, so people, that even if they are at that moment in their lives not cultivating the fruits of righteousness, as manifest by the gospel of Jesus Christ, Luke chapter 8, verse 11, the seed is the word of God by cultivating a harvest in the kingdom of God, Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through through 29, the kingdom of heaven is as if a man should cast seed into the ground. The Bible declares here in, in Romans 13, 10, that people are still fulfilling the law. As long as they're working no ill to their neighbor, they were still residing under the shadow of Almighty God. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans chapter 13, verse 10. They're still abiding just because they're passively receiving of the glory of God doesn't mean that they're residing in condemnation. And I think that that's, that's a big part. I think that, that judgment of hypocrisy upon the female persuasion is another reason because the image of the beast cannot satiate its illicit sexual desires. It, it egressed the presence of God. It began soliciting the worship of death to satanically cultivate its sexual desires. And it justified this by residing in judgment upon the female persuasion as being as people that are worthy of death for fornicating in the sight of God. And that's just the manifestation of it being set apart in exclusion from the presence of Holy Father God as manifested by the presence of God and the seal of God being imparted to the saints, granting eternal life to all those that love his appearing. Revelation 17, 5, And upon her forehead was name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, Mother of Harlots, and Abominations of the Earth. And so we have the absence of Holy Father God, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 through 7, John chapter 8, verse 12, For God is light, and in him is no darkness at all, at all. John 8, 12, I am the light, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Obadiah 15 and 16 makes it absolutely crystal clear. The absence of God is darkness. It's, that's, that's what it is. It's blackness and darkness forever. And so we have in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20 through 22, we have God declaring the end of the glory of God being harvested in a passive manifestation upon all physical people, all, all people residing in their flesh upon the world. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20. And so we have, we know uh, that at this time they know, they know they're not saved. But this is another declaration of the vertical ta detachment from the glory of God and the mark of the beast. It's another another reference exactly to the mark of the beast. And Babylonian captivity is people that it, it renders people unconscious to the fact that they have the mark of the beast. And so this is the absence of Holy Father God and it's the residence of Babylon and darkness. Thus remaining cognizance, thus removing cognizance of death's presence in the temple of God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 9 and 10, where we have the fulfillment of the, the death warrant upon upon antichrist and all and the image to the beast as the image of the beast but it's actually it's on and it's not the image of the beast because the image of the beast they won't lose their lives until they're destroyed with the spirit of his mouth and the brightness of his coming at the second advent of jesus christ but the death warrant of of antichrist is a different matter altogether ezekiel 28 wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee. I am a God, but thou shalt be a man, and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hands of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Okay, we made it through point number 12, 13, 
and 14. So we're going to stop right there. We've kind of run out of time. And uh, uh, I, will, it's, I will start the next lesson here uh, shortly. So, Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel to, see notif to receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.